Swarovski, they got a haircut. You guys gotta be proud of me. I mean, I got a haircut. It's not the haircut. It's like, don't know what I was expecting because it's coronavirus time. The barber was my dad, so like, I'm just thankful that I didn't end up like a parrot that got squeezed through a jet engine and came out the other side. It looks pretty good and not even that bad. And now it doesn't feel like I'm wearing a wig all the time. But we are not here to talk about my hair. We are here to talk about the coolest algorithm strategy in the whole universe. That's right. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we are going to be talking about greedy algorithms. Now, greedy algorithms are basically a family of algorithms that follow a greedy strategy. But I think the more interesting thing is focusing on what that greedy strategy is. Because we've already talked about a bunch of greedy algorithms. Like, we've talked about Prims, we've talked about Kruskal, we've talked about Dijkstra's. But the strategy itself is what's interesting about greedy algorithms. So to make this more concrete, what a greedy strategy is, is basically when you do the best thing you could possibly do at your current situation. Now we want to use a technical definition, a greedy algorithm is finding the locally optimal solution in order to eventually find the globally optimal solution. But that's kind of a lame way to think about it, come on, we gotta talk about it in epic terminology, okay, this is epic terminology. Dude, the way I like to think about it is greedy algorithms is like procrastinating, right? Like, at this very moment, Doing your English project that's due in like two hours, this is not a very pressing like time commitment. So like at this very moment, the best thing you could possibly be doing is watching YouTube instead, right? And now you know that this is technically a bad idea, right? If you watch YouTube now, then you had to cram your project in one hour instead of cramming it in two hours. Like that's just not acceptable. But right now, the best thing you could do is watch YouTube because that's 69,000 times funner. So essentially, the greedy strategy that you took is instead of working on your English project, you decided to do the best thing for you right now and you decided to watch YouTube. And now you might be saying, why the heck would I want to use greedy? We know that it's bad to procrastinate, so why would you want to use a greedy algorithm? Well, let me show you. So one really common example is, let's say that you got your friend Bob over here. I'm sure you guys all have friends named Bob. It's a very generic name. You better have a friend named Bob or I'm going to come to your house. Okay, you know what? Never mind. And he wants $25. And you got like infinity $20 bills because you rich as heck. You got infinity $10 bills. Oh, that's not how you write dollars. What am I doing? For some reason, I forgot the dollars go in front of the number. And then you also got infinity $5 bills, and you right here, you, your name is you. So how could you give him the $25 in the smallest number of bills? So it's pretty obvious that you had to give the biggest bills first until you can't give any more of the $20 bills, then you move on to the 10, give until you can't give any more $10 bills, and then give five until you can't give any $5 bills, and one, so on and so forth. But this is exactly what a greedy algorithm is. You're basically giving them the biggest bill because you know that, like, if you give bigger bills, you have to give less bills. So, at the current time, the best thing to do is give the biggest bill that you could possibly get. Now you might be saying, what the heck, that's so obvious, why are you even talking about this to us? Like, you don't need to teach this nonsense to us? Well, the thing about greedy algorithms is that even though the premise is really simple, and even though it might seem obvious for some applications, the hard part is proving that it actually gives you the best solution. And also, you don't even have to like consciously think about it. You just need to have it in the back of your mind that this is a potential strategy you could apply to a problem. So every time you go into a problem, try to think, is there a way we could just do this with greedy? Cause that's like the easiest thing. The first thing you should think about is could we do it with greedy? And then you could think in what way do we select it in order to get the locally optimum solution? Okay, so that was just a bunch of unconcrete, unspecific nonsense. Let us get into specific examples of how greedy is applied. Alrighty, IMO in my opinion, the best way to apply this kind of thing is in scheduling, which is something I could really use help with, but like, you know, we're not talking about me. And basically you're given, let's say, n activity. Let's say we're given five activities and we're given their start time and end time. And we want to fit as many activities as we can into our day. So let's say activity one starts at like one and ends at three, then the other one starts at two and the five, then the other one starts at two and the four, and then another one starts at four and at five, and then another one starts at three, uh, what should we do? Three and at six, how about that? Okay, so if we draw out how it looks, like the segments, so there's one to three, then there's two to five, then there's two to four, then there's four to five, and then there's three to six. Wait, that's not how it works. Oh, three to six, okay. Now you can probably tell it just by looking at the diagram that the best thing you could possibly do is do two activities at a time. Because like you could do one three and then this one or like one three and then this one or like this one and this one. And that's basically all your options but you can't ever get three activities in your day. But how the heck do we do this algorithmically? Like what what do we even start with? And and technically this, this particular one not that bad algorithmically. We just take the first one then we take the next one that we're allowed to take, which is this guy, and then we get two. But that's not a very good way to do it, because what happens if we have another activity that starts like right here, one to two? Then how do you know what to take? Now, like, 
the reason why greed is kind of hard is because there's a lot of ways we could choose optimal solutions, right? We could either choose the shortest one that we are looking at right now, or we could choose like the one that starts last or starts first or whatever. So how do we know what to do it on? Well, basically we want to find something that has cool properties. And for this specific application, that is the endpoint. So if we start this by endpoint, why don't we do that? So we got a one, two as well. Then one, two goes first and we'll switch these two guys. Two, four, two, five. And if we draw it out, it should look something like this. This goes here and this guy flips. Okay, so now I'm sorted by endpoint. Now if we sorted by endpoint, right? Like we know that if we take the earliest endpoint, we're deleting the fewest number of activities, right? Because if we take any other endpoint, it's gonna delete everything before. So if we take the guy with the smallest end time, we only eliminate one possible activity that we could have been doing. And then if we go to the next guy, if we took one of these later guys, it's gonna eliminate all of these guys. Or if we took this guy, it'll eliminate these guys. But we don't want that. We want as many activities possible in our day. And the reason why it deletes all the ones before it is because basically once we take an activity with a certain endpoint, we only want activities that start after that endpoint, right? So in order to maximize the possible activities we could do in the future, we want to minimize the endpoint. So then if we take this guy, which is the next in our ordering that hasn't been eliminated yet, then we only eliminate this guy, and then we can take this guy, and we'll blame it. We get our maximum of three. It's very cool. Why don't we just code this up to make this clear? Why don't we do it in our batch? So why don't we def a function called schedule, and it takes in a list of, like, what well, don't we say, activities. And basically these activities are going to be a start time and an end time tuple. So what we want to do first is we want to sort our activities based on their end time. And we can do that easily with activities.sort. And if we want to do it based on its second key, all we have to do is passing key is equal to lambda x x zero x one because the second thing. Okay. All right. And then basically what we want to do is we want to go through our array and and keep track of our current endpoint and anything that has a start time after or equal to our endpoint we're allowed to take. So we'll go through four activity in activities. Oh, we should keep track of our endpoint. Endpoint is equal to zero, and we'll basically say if activity zero is greater than or equal to endpoint, then we'll take it, and we'll also have to keep track of our total activity that we've done so far. And then what we could do is we could just go here, and we could say tot plus equals one, and then endpoint is equal to the current endpoint of the new activity that we took. And then at the very end, we just gotta print out top and we are Gucci and we should probably do some IO stuff to read this thing in okay okay so this right here is the final code right we basically got our function then we got our read and stuff and then we have our print the function return stuff so why don't we try our sample input python3 scheduling.py whoops I forgot on my other computer is python3 it is python on this one okay bruh I forgot a colon what am I doing <laughs> okay so let's get rid of all the yucky error messages let's try again there you go, three, very epic. So that's basically how you code it. Why don't we move on to another application? Now the next application is a bit more tough. It's called job scheduling. And wow, it's the same thing. Job scheduling can't it be just exactly the same. No, it's not. Basically what it is, is if you have a bunch of jobs, let's say N jobs, and each one takes one hour, and each one has a certain award, but you had to finish it by a certain time, which jobs should you do in order to maximize your profit? So for example, let's say we have five jobs, and the first one has a deadline of one and you get like 600 points for it. There's another one at two, you get 700 points for it. There's another one at three, you get like 500 points for it. And there's another one at four where you get 800 points for it. Or why don't we do another one at two? Okay. And that's not five, I know how to count. And then we could do another one at three and this one gives you like 900 points. So for us, it's pretty obvious that you have to do 700 for your first hour, then 800 at your second hour, and then 900 for your third hour and you get a total of 2400. Now this one's not straightforward, right? Because if you like, just do it based on which one is the best one, then we would do 900 first, then we do 800, but then we wouldn't be able to do the 700 because that was due on hour two. So we can't do it in that order. If we do it in order of deadline, 600 comes first, so why don't we just do 600? And then the highest one do two is 800, and then 900, no, that's not good enough. So all the like simple ways of thinking about greedy are not gonna work. So how should we approach this? We want to find a greedy solution, right? Well, we know for sure that we want the more rewarding ones, right? But we know it's not going to work if we just straight up do the most expensive one first, then the next most profitable one next, and then so on and so forth. That's not going to work. But why don't we do this a little bit more creatively? We know that there's no reason to schedule jobs earlier, right? We might as well procrastinate as much as we can before doing them, right? It doesn't 
benefit of, you don't get more money for doing it earlier. So why don't we sort it based on profit? 900, 3, 800, 2, 700, 2, five, uh, 601, 503. So let's look at the first one, the one that gives us 900. Well, it's due at 3, and we've not scheduled anything else at 3, so we might as well do it the hour before 3. So from 2 to 3, we will do the 900 guy. Then 800, right? This guy has a deadline of 2, so we might as well do it as late as possible. We look at 2, then nothing scheduled from 1 to 2, so might as well procrastinate till then. So this guy is going to do 800. And then we look at 700, and we're like, we want to delay this as much as possible, but we're already doing something from 1 to 2, so we're going to have to do it from 0 to 1. And well, Blammer, we found the solution, and all we got to do is sum that up, and we are Gucci Gang. And if we came across a job and we weren't able to schedule it, then we just skip it over. Because if we can't schedule it, we can't schedule it. Okay, so let's code this boy up. So why don't we do vim and what are we gonna call this job.py, very cool. And we will do a def and we will call it schedule, sure. Another one, and job. And once again, we wanna sort by the second one, except we wanna sort in decreasing order. Now since this is Python and we're using lists, we might as well just sort from uh, like uh, smallest to greatest and then just go backwards through the list. So what we could do is we could just do job.sort and then key is equal to lambda x and then x1. And then we do jobs.reverse and we go through it. So we go for jobs and jobs. And we should also have an occupy list. And this is going to be false time like 10 to the 5. So that's basically what it's probably going to be on Yusuko. Or 10 to the 4 actually because of the n squared algorithm it seems. Then basically we say time is equal to job 0. And then while occupied time. We're just going to keep going backwards. But time also has to be greater than or equal to 1 because the earliest we can schedule a job for is to finish at 1. So while time is greater than 1, yeah, then we're going to do time minus minus. And then at the very end, if time is greater than 0, what we could do is we could schedule the job basically and we'll set occupied time equals true and we will schedule it in which case we will get the money. So we got to keep track of how much money we have. So we'll have pot is equal to 0. And then we'll do top plus equals job zero one. Okay. And then at the very end, we're gonna return top because that's as much money as we're gonna make, and we should get twenty four hundred. I'll do all the I/O stuff real quick. All right. So this is the final code. Let us try running it. So we got five one six hundred two seven hundred three five hundred two eight hundred three nine hundred, and we get twenty four hundred just like we expected. Very cool. Okay, so that's basically all we got to talk about greedy algorithms, and basically there are a ton of greedy algorithms out there. The actual algorithm themselves aren't that useful. It's basically understanding that this is a thing that could work and applying it to problems. So basically my advice is to keep it in the back of your mind, and the first thing you go when you go into a problem, ask yourself, is there a way we can apply greedy? That's because greedy is just the simplest way to program something. Like if there's a greedy solution, you should try to find that because that's generally going to be the fastest. But anyways, I hope that was helpful. Thank you guys for watching so much. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know what other kind of things you guys want to see for these musical crash courses. Some of you guys specifically wanted greedy algorithms. Here you guys go. Hope it was helpful. I think I said that already. God dang it. But anyway, thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.